So hi, this is mainly for 242 dice on Reddit because we talked about adding bumpers to print dice more successfully and bumpers are all these uh, small lines around these edges uh, w from this prints that hasn't been uh, processed or post-processed so there's no sending done yet. But I had very, very successful prints with adding these bumpers that were inspired by Argent Rose on Etsy, where I bought some Airsail dice before. And I will adding bumpers to all my uh, custom generated dice from now on because it was so easy, it has so many benefits. First, I will cut uh, straight edges when printing. And secondly, when sanding down the faces, I will actually have a haptical feedback when I move my fingertip around the corner of one edge, I will actually feel there is a little bit of bumper left, so it, mo it needs more sanding. And I do not sand down more than really necessary. So those are the two benefits of adding those bumpers. And let's see how I add those. So I generated dice using Dice Maker, a fabulous Windows utility, if unfortunately only Windows yet, um, from one Reddit post that I will link below. And these uh, dice that are generated do not come with die, uh, bumpers, do not come with supports, but um, as I said before, bumpers for me, I benefit greatly from those. So I've found a way to create those bumpers very, very easily using Blender because Blender is a 3D program and can import STL files, the files that are used to feed a slicer with to actually be able to print a 3D object. So I'll just remove this um, default cube here and I'll we'll go to File, Import, STL and I will select the, the STL of the dice that I want to add bumpers to. And in the end we will have one STL for the die and one STL for the bumpers. So you'd, if, if, for example, I will intend to use Dice Maker to create very, very uh, various dice in the future and they have all the same dimensions, I only need to create the bumpers once and reuse them within the slicer afterwards. So that's very, very be beneficial for me and it's not very cumbersome as you will see. So let's, let's go and deep dive here. We got this Celtic die that I created and let's go and add well, the deep to handy, why not? So I'm importing this STL and you can see I can scroll with a mouse wheel. I can um, click the middle mouse button and move around. This will help us significantly the next step. And we will need to select all these uh, straight edges of the die, which are called um, not faces, but edges, I think, uh, within Blender. And we will create a different a 3D object only with these edges, because now we can see we will be entering edit mode. And you can see the dice maker created so many faces, so many vertices, so many edges here, and we do not need everything. So we will select only the ones that we need. So left clicking, once outside of this object will deselect everything and we will use a combination of mouse wheel clicking and dragging to rotate the objects and just uh, scrolling with the mouse wheel to, to zoom in and out to select only the edges here. And the first thing we will change is the select mode and the top left corner we will select this one to really, really only select the edges. We will hold shift to add to the selection. So right now nothing is selected. We will continue with the first one over here. And I thought, I think it's way easier to select it more near to the vertex, so the point over here and not in the middle one. So it has trouble to select the actual edge over here we select on the middle. But if you, if you go more near to the end point, it's more easy for Blender to actually detect what I want to select. So from now on, I will be holding shift and I will click over here to select all the edges that are actually forming the geometry of the die. So we are going here and rotating the die 
and they always select everything that we need. So this is this one. Sometimes it doesn't pick up the selection and I'll just come back to it later. It doesn't matter. Just make sure that you select all the edges that you need because I haven't found a way to correct the selection um, afterwards. So if I fuck this stuff up, I'll just continue and restart the selection process from the start. Um, someone more experienced with Blender will probably find or know a way to restart a selection or to just redefine a selection, but I don't know how. So therefore I will just make extra sure that I will select everything. So when I'm now finished, I will just go through one, two, three, four, five, that's okay. Then I will just go to one, two, three, four, five, I've got all these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine. Then all these. So it seems good. I select all the edges that I want to process. So now what we need to do is to duplicate the selection and separate it from this model. And we will be using two shortcuts. The first one is Shift D. And you will see that the mouse goes to change to some kind of, um, now when I move the mouse, you can see that I can move the selection, the separation or the du duplication from these. And if I hit the left mouse button, we will duplicate and move the selection to this position that I selected. We do not want to do that. We want to uh, keep the position exactly the same as the die because it will help us in the step when we actually insert both of those metals in the slicer. So any moving, any like, different position will make it worse for us in the slicer to position both objects on top of each other. So that's not what we want. So let's undo this step here and hit again, control D and then instantly enter. So we duplicate the selection in place without moving and translating it. And then we need to separate it because you can see we've only got the D20 Celtic object over here. So we, um, separated by pressing P for separation, I guess. I don't know. So hit P. Uh, so it did not work for fuck's sake. So I select that. I hit Shift D and hit Enter. And then I hit P and select Selection. So we separate the selection from the actual model. So we, now we got two actual models, the D20 Celtic that we imported, the DSTL. We can hide that by clicking the eye icon. And then all we, that we got is the wireframe model that from the edges that we just selected and separated from the original model. To make sure that we do not fuck this up, I will right click on the actual die model and delete that from this Blender scene. So now all we left, have left is a camera and a light. We do not cover that and the world from model. So left click once over here to select everything and go to edit mode because what's happening now is to actually create the bumpers. Um, we hit A for select everything or all select all the contents of this model. And then we will separate all these lines from each other to make sure that we do not have a combination of um, triangles and separate lines because that will make the resulting bumpers not very um, well you will see about that um, I do not know, know how to express that but we go we select a for everything and go to mesh and then we will uh, split the actual wireframe here by edges and vertices. And that makes sure that all these things are just separate lines and not a line and a triangle over here because for the next step, we'll go to this wrench icon on the top right, uh, bottom right, and we will add a modifier and we will add a modifier skin to that. 
you will see that only one of those wireframe segments has been skinned to be an actual 3D column. But if we hit mark root, all the other edges will be supplied with the same behavior. So we got pretty bumpers right now. The only thing that's not so pretty is the point where all these separate lines are connecting and we will can uh, add another modifier which is a sub subdivision surface modifier to make that a little bit more pleasing. So it's all a little bit rounded and the edge where all the edges are connecting the endpoint is not that harsh and not that like ruggish. And this will print a little bit better. So this is an optional step, I did recommend it one. And now we got the bumper STL. So we will export that by file export STL. And I already did that. So you, you'll just need to do this once. You go to dice and I call them D3, D, D20 bumpers STL. And you just hit export STL. And with that said and done, that's all you need to do in Blender. So we can close that. And then you are in your favorite slicer and I'm using Litchi, as I said, and I will just add files here. And I will add two files. One, the actual D20 SEL that I got from Etsy or created from Dice Maker or from any other source and the actual bumper STL. Um, so let's add this one over here and then a D20 bumper STL. And with both selected and both added, we can see that they are in the, at the exact same position and that they are on this, I will um, select only one and move one of those. So this is a bad idea. But if we hit undo, if you select both and select both and move both in contrast and rotate them if, if necessary, then we do have a bumper and a die and it's pretty awesome to print because one thing that you need to know about, so let's move this one over here uh, and let's add the D6 one that I prepared earlier. So we got a D6 and D6 bumpers. So just make sure because Litchi will add them at the very bottom of the print plate. So you can see that both the bumper and the actual die are flat on the build plate as it should be when printing because of adhesion but you make you need to make sure that to you select the actual die and move it a tiny tiny bit up you can see that here over here uh, let's i moved it on the z because i'm stupid so let's move them to x and y to zero but the Z axis, that needs to be moved a little bit to the front and I tend to zoom in a bit and make it like I eyeball it. So I, that, that's not the exact science and it doesn't need to be. I just look at how much is the bumper here and how much should the bumper be on the Z axis. And that's pretty okay. So that is only necessary for the ones that are actually placed on the build plate in the same section, um, exact positions, and then you can move them together in unison by selecting both of them. And I will rotate that by going to top, um, rotate that, and to make it stand on its, on its tip like this. And the actual benefit from, from this bumper already is now when I'm adding supports I'll just move them a little, little bit to the to the top so eight millimeters and then I will adding supports and supports with um, bumpers are so much easier than without because now I just add one heavy support at the top of the pin that is the most near point to the build plate so everything that is standing on this edge will be a heavy support. And then I'll add some medium supports. 
roughly beginning from the outside. So I will make sure that one is on the edges of the of the um, of the die, maybe like that. Super easy, and it takes so much less time. And now I'm just adding a couple of support down this bumper. And because the bumper is not actually part of the die, and will be sent it down afterwards, I do not need to be super precise here. So that is saving me so much time. Uh, it's insane. So I'm just adding those randomly in roughly the same distances. So with that said and done, it looks like garbage. But it will just select all of them, right click them and make support pillar. And it looks amazingly. It's like that uh, you know, if I could show you the viewport where I want it, it would be even better. So it's very, 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 very easy. And the only thing that I need to do is to, to search for islands um, with a normal accuracy that's pretty enough. I select, um, so, mm. so islands again, I do not want to uh, change the, the medium supports to light ones, but I'll just add light supports to the islands that are detected and that's all. And then I can print them and they are coming out great. I do not need to do anything more. So good luck with printing these dice and I hope you could follow the instructions very, very easily. If there are any questions, please feel free to ask.